Greetings to one and all. You are listening to MMGC Fortnightly podcast. For all those companies whose financial year ends on 31st March every year, the finance teams and the secretarial teams of such companies will be busy preparing the financial statements and annual reports and convening of annual general meetings. So in this edition of MMGC Fortnightly podcast, let's discuss about the precautions to be taken while preparation of financial statements. And to guide us in this discussion, we have with us CS Mr. Vallabh Joshi from research team of MMJC. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Rutuja. So, sir, to begin with the discussion about financial statements, the first question that comes to my mind is about consolidation of financial statements. So, can you throw some light about on the provisions relating to consolidation? Yes, sure. As far as legal provisions relating to consolidation are concerned, Section 129 of the Companies Act and the relevant accounting standard that is AS21 and India's uh, 110, based on whichever accounting standard is applicable, are to be referred. These provisions prescribe the situations when the, com- when the company is required to prepare consolidated accounts. As per section 129 subsection 3, the company is required to prepare consolidated accounts if it has any subsidiary or associate company. Okay. So now that you have said that consolidation is applicable only if the company has any subsidiary or associate, I have a question in my mind. That is, what if any company holds 51% stake in any limited liability partnership, that is NLP, then Will such LLP become subsidiary of the company and will the consolidation be applicable in that case? To answer your question, we will have to first check whether an LLP falls under the definition of subsidiary. Now there are two different definitions of subsidiary, the one under Companies Act and the other one under Accounting Standards. As per the definition of subsidiary under the Companies Act, For a body corporate to be considered as a subsidiary, the holding company must either control the composition of board of directors or must control more than one half of total voting power. In case of LLP, there is no board of directors and there may or may not be any concept of voting power. Hence, although LLP is a body corporate, but whether an LLP can be a subsidiary or not is a matter of interpretation. But as per definition under accounting standards, an LLP can be considered as a subsidiary of the reporting entity if the reporting entity controls the LLP. Further, since the consolidation must be done as per procedure specified under accounting standards, an LLP can be a subsidiary as per accounting standards. Therefore, consolidation of accounts of LLP will have to be done by the reporting company if it is becoming a subsidiary as per the applicable accounting standards. Okay. Now, can you explain the criticalities relating to associate company from the point of view of Companies Act and accounting standards? I mean, is there is there any difference therein as per the definitions, like in case of subsidiary? Uh, just like subsidiary, there is a difference in definition of associate in Companies Act Accounting Standard 23 and Indian Accounting Standard 28. The very first and basic difference is that the Companies Act uses the term associate company, whereas Accounting Standards, Indian Accounting Standard uses the term associate. That means in case of Companies Act, an entity can become associate only if it is a company, but that is not the case with Accounting Standards and Indian accounting standards. If we compare the definition of associate under Companies Act and accounting standards or Indian accounting standards, all three definitions talk about a company or entity over which the reporting entity has a significant influence. But again, significant influence is defined differently at both places. As per in explanation six, of Section 2 of Companies Act, significant influence refers to having control over 20% of voting power of the company. 
whereas as per clause 3.2 of accounting standard 23 and indian accounting standard 28 significant influence refers to power to participate in the policy decisions of the investee by conjoint reading of all these definitions we can say that if the reporting company holds 20% or more voting power in the investee company then it shall have significant influence on the investee and as a result the investee company will become associate company of the reporting company as per para 5 of indian accounting standards unless clearly demonstrated otherwise if reporting company holds 20% or more in investee it is presumed to have significant influence over investee and if the reporting company holds less than 20% voting power then it is presumed not to have significant influence indias 28 and accounting standard 23 provide for certain conditions on the basis of which existence of significant influence can be determined therefore as per indias or as that is indian accounting standards or accounting standards also if reporting company holds 20% or more voting power and it is not demonstrated otherwise the reporting company has significant influence over investee and as a result the investee is the associate of reporting company as per accounting standards or indian accounting standards further as i mentioned earlier as per definitions under accounting standards or indian accounting standards non company entities like partnership firms etc can also become associates in such case consolidation with such non compliant entities will be applicable as per indias but not as per companies act also one more point worth noting is that as per indian accounting standards or accounting standards consolidation of joint ventures is also required to be done if the joint venture is in the form of a company then under companies act it will be covered under associate company but if it is not a company then the consolidation will have to be done only as per accounting standards or indian accounting standards and not as per companies act okay so now after discussing about applicability tell me one thing are there any exemptions from requirement of consolidation uh yes there are exemptions uh from the requirement of consolidation of accounts rule 6 of companies accounts rules 2014 states that if the ultimate holding company of the reporting company is doing consolidation then the reporting company need not consolidate for example a limited is a subsidiary of b limited and b limited is a subsidiary of c limited then in this case if c limited is consolidating the accounts then as per companies act it is not mandatory for b limited to prepare consolidated accounts subject to some conditions okay and what are those conditions and do they come from accounting standards no they come from rule 6 of companies accounts rules itself these conditions say that any company can be exempted from preparation of consolidated financial statements if point 1 the reporting company is a wholly owned subsidiary or partially owned subsidiary and the fact that consolidated statements are not being prepared is communicated to all members including those who are not entitled to vote in writing and they have not objected to the same secondly the reporting company should also should not be listed on any stock exchange and neither should it be proposing to list itself third the holding or ultimate holding company of the reporting company should have prepared and filed with roc the consolidated financial statements as i mentioned just now these conditions are prescribed by companies act and those are under accounting standards are separately prescribed therein the companies are required to consolidate to take those conditions as well as in consideration before deciding whether exemption from consolidation is applicable or not okay but even if the intermediate holding company that is b limited in your example does not prepare consolidated financial statements but still it is required to 
attach a statement giving details of subsidiaries and associates in its financial statements right yes that is correct the attachment of aoc1 to the financial statements is altogether a different requirement and for consolidation okay thank you sir that was a very elaborate discussion on consolidated financial statements in our upcoming editions of mmjc fortnightly podcast we shall be discussing about more precautions to be taken while preparation of financial statements and cares to be taken while actual filing of form aoc4 till then thank you for listening to us and please feel free to write to us about your feedback at mmjcinfo@mmjc.in thank you rutuja